that means we also okay we also will move a bit if you want if not you can also watch but it would be nice if people also move with me a bit because if uh, uh, if we dance or if you want to learn dance we have also to practice right so it's just a small door that i'm opening today it's about um, doing choreography contemporary choreography so i would like to mention in the beginning three words the first word is the theme we always have a theme in our head right so if we want to do something then we have a theme in our mind it's also important but it's also interesting to forget about the theme in the beginning when you start because when we create uh, contemporary choreography, we want to surprise ourselves with new movements and we want somehow to do a research with our body. We will come to this later, what this means. But if you have a theme in your mind, just put it somewhere in your brain. It's not the first thing for me, because if you, for example, have the story too much in your head, then you become, you become narrative, you do like a theater. And we as dancers, we have much more possibilities than going back into the cliches or the images that we already know. So maybe you wanna do the Mahabharata, you know, put it away first, have it some, it's somewhere there, you know, it's the, the, the spirit is there, but start with something simple. So this is the first thing. Because otherwise, I tell you why, you want to do a love story and you have a love couple and then we come into the things that we have seen already a hundred times and we want to create new material and we want to surprise us and the public. So don't take the theme in the beginning too serious because you should start with a research about movement material, body language, dance material. So this is something I find very important that you give yourself the time and i know for example when we have done our first young choreographers in the shepokala academy in, in paka some people were blocked with their theme because they had a theme like a story in their head like a theater story and then the body was blocked first let the body play around let's create material and then you have a look onto the material and then the material maybe inspires you. And the theme is somewhere here, you know, it's somewhere around. But in the beginning, it's not so important. Otherwise, you put a chair and a table and one is the mother, the other is the father. And there is, you know, and then the story is already there. And then you do a narrative theater. But I think we can do more than that. We have more layers in dance. So this is the first thing. The second thing is the music, you know. Dance is not just an interpretation of music. It's not just somehow for being the fulfiller of a, a, a music score. You can have an inspiration from the music, it's fine. But if we always put the music in the beginning and then we try just to fulfill the music, we miss a lot of possibilities that we have when we create in the beginning without music. And the third thing is space. So we should always be aware of the space. It's not just our body and the body of the others. It's also the space we are moving in. And in these pandemic times, we know that our space is limited, but still we can have a big awareness of the space. So when we start now, we have theme and maybe ideas of music. This we put a bit in the beginning to the side. It's not the most important thing in the beginning. The most important thing in the beginning, we keep the space and my body. Yeah, so my body in space. This is how we start. So what does choreography mean? We can somehow go back to classical Indian dance forms. We can go back to classical western dance forms we can go back to modern dance forms then we just put dance material together learned material and actually 
our body is writing in space. No, choreography is actually the body is writing in space. It's like writing words, no? but we are writing with our body. But in the contemporary choreography, we want to create new movements. Yeah. First, we want somehow that our choreography has a meaning now in this time where we are. So even if I'm doing something historical, it should have a meaning for us, for me, for my neighbor, for my colleagues. Um, I want to talk about today. And this means for me, contemporary choreography. Um, we could, for example, start just as an example, and we have done this with the young choreographers. We could start with the material that we already know. So if you are a Kata dancer, then you have certain kind of movements that you already know. But the movement belongs to a certain music, a certain costume. If we put the costume away, for example, no costume, and, and we maybe do the, the, the choreography that we already know just in chapters, then we would call it deconstruction. So you with all respect for the kata dance, you can use even this material and to put it into a new frame. People have done it in the Young Choreographers platform. So it's as if you would see your material with new eyes. I could do this easily because I could, for example, I can look at Joya dancing and then because I'm not a Katak dancer, I can just use it as a material. I don't have any relation to the story, to the, to the cultural background. I could just say, can you do the first movement and combine it with the third movement? Can you just do it backwards? You know, we do something like this and we have a different and new view on something that we already know and we surprise us with that. And then we have a look at it and then maybe a new inspiration comes. So it's something that you could do with your dance background. So not just repeat what you already have learned, but put it into a different frame, deconstruct it and, um, and get rid of all the things that you already know. So um, this is one thing, right? The other thing is creating new material. And creating new material is not just repeating my class when I'm coming and giving a contemporary dance class. This is too easy. Creating new material means that you do a research with your own body. Yeah? So I give you an example. So I, I have to go in, in a dance room or I can stay at home and do it at home because now we are all at home. And, and then I have to let my body think. Yeah? So I can even meditate before, I can concentrate, I can give me a little task. So I don't want just to repeat all the things that I have done before. I want to create new material. So I could, for example, give me a simple task my hip always starts to move. For example, yeah, you can work with your different parts of the body. Very abstract, very simple. So I could, for example, um, say, okay, my hip always starts. Hip. Okay, I go back. Hip. Hip. And I let my body react. And I create already. You see, I create material out of the moment. Yeah? I concentrate myself, I put myself in space, and I tell myself for today, it's just my hip. It's just, I just want to see what kind of movement I create when I'm using just my hip. So I can, and I have to go always back because I want to remember. I try to remember, I went here, I went here. I can go here. Yeah, one more time. It's just, I didn't prepare anything. I just tell myself, hip, okay, hip, hip. 
And I can continue. I can go from here, from here. Next thing maybe is, oh, my next task is elbow. Maybe elbow. Yeah? So this is what I mean with research. You need time and you need your body and space. And you do the research with your own body. If you have a, another body, not your body, but maybe the body of your colleague, of your student, it's a bit different because you see somebody, you give the person a task, and then you can do a comment on it. You can say, okay, go back to that. It's beautiful. Go back, start from the beginning. You know, so you would be the advisor for the other body. If you work with yourself, it's very helpful to film yourself with a video so you can see how it looks like. So you start to create one more time. I put my camera, okay, hip, 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 elbow, yeah? Maybe the next thing is hat. Something, yeah, you can create yourself out of the moment without going back into something that might be I was teaching, your other teacher was teaching. Let your body think, yeah. So, this is what we call research, and research should be there that you create a pool of movements that you can play with, you create a body language for a piece, and then the theme comes after, yeah. Then you have a look at it, and maybe the theme was, I don't know, the theme was, I, I'm just kidding, the theme is, I was very interested maybe in Mahabharata. It's just because I'm watching the Mahabharata now on video, so I'm, and maybe you think after a while, ah, maybe this could, nice, could be nice for a character like Arjuna, or, you know, but you can separate these things, you can separate theme and research you can combine it later maybe they come slowly yeah slowly into the story the research is our big freedom we are dancers and we have the freedom we don't have like a, a story uh, um, for example in, if you go with actors right they have a book and then the first person is coming the second person is coming we have all the freedom we can do what we want and we should start with the freedom. We should start with creating and somehow bringing new material into this world and then playing around with this material. So this for me is very important. Um, I told you, so this is my body. When I have a different body, I can also have more than one. So I have a group in front of me if I'm a choreographer. So I, I'm going to a space like a rehearsal space and I want to give material or I want to create material with this group. So sometimes maybe it's difficult because sometimes maybe the people are not used to improvise so much. You know, it's maybe new. So you can also give a bit of material, simple, and the people start first to learn a bit of material and then they play with this material. And we're gonna do this now. So whoever wants to move, just moves a bit, come on to your feet. And I just want to, so you to, 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 to feel somehow your own body if you're into it. So if you have space, you can do this, yeah? And I can try, to put myself a bit bigger so that I'm watching my stuff. So I, for today, I created a small material. Can you see me, Tanu? Can you see me? Okay. I created a bit of material. Some of you know already this material. So for example, I, I'm coming to a group and I'm giving them eight counts. So this is one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Very simple, yeah? You can teach this. This is the start. The start is always what I call 
kicking the ball. We kick a ball. So if you are um, a bit afraid of starting a choreography with out of nothing, you can prepare a little thing, a little choreography for yourself that comes out of your body. I prepared this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I cannot just teach the material. I can teach a good relation of my body and space with this. Yeah. So I'm going up. I'm going down. I'm going into a diagonal precision. I'm coming into a different diagonal. I'm going back into this diagonal with all my body. Into this corner, I'm coming back into center and I'm back very clearly in space. So this you can teach to people. More people can learn this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if many people do this choreography, it's maybe a bit boring because it's all the same. But you can keep the frame. You can keep the frame of the eight counts and maybe tell them, tell everybody, keep the eight counts, but create your own eight counts with this material. You don't have to use all the steps. For example, I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and yeah. So maybe one does the decision. No, I'm just doing this twice. So imagine I'm doing that. Another one beside me is doing this. Yeah, there is a relation, it's talking to each other, the two choreographies, but it's already interesting. Yeah. So when okay. wants to move, start to move once with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. And now try to think for yourself to change a bit, yeah? Change for yourself, just in the moment. I'm changing as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah? So maybe the next person starts here, yeah? And so, no, I'm starting, keep the eight counts, no? To have like equality in space. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have clearly a choreography which can be combined in different things. And with this, you can play around for hours. Yeah. Imagine you have four people. Four people do it differently, but then you can tell them, for example, okay, twice everybody together, second time everybody individual, third time again together and you can and you can see okay there is something swinging swinging together and you create already an image which is very interesting yeah so this is an easy form of starting you give material but you give the responsibilities to the dancers to work a bit with the material yeah maybe somebody is just doing one two three four, five, six, seven, eight. It's also interesting. If four people do a lot of movement, you see similarities in some things. It's already interesting. It's already talking, yeah? So this could be the first frame. Eight counts and eight counts individually. So that would mean if I put these two things together, and me as a choreographer, I say, first round, everybody together, second round, individually. So let's start this. This would be A, B. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
A individually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And if somebody's beside me, I saw somebody moving, very good. Then it's, it's together, but not together. It's interesting, it's talking to each other, the two movements. I can also change the material when I'm just changing the rhythm. So for now, for today, I always want to keep the eight counts. So I can change completely the material with double tempo, for example. I can show you. So I could do, maybe the person who is standing can try this. So first time we do like we did, second time we double tempo, yeah? Seven, eight, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Yeah? So this could be very interesting. So I'm standing here, somebody's standing there. The different person is standing maybe there. Space, yeah? This is also. The next thing, you put people together, they do the same, but they not do the same. So you, 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 you create kind of a communication there because we don't speak all the same things all the time. We speak different things and that's a conversation. So imagine I'm doing this, next person doing that. And then you decide third person is maybe over there on stage because distance also talks, yeah? So it's not just putting people together, it's also where do I put people together? How is the distance? So this is the, um, the, the deconstruction of my material, for example, this is my material. And then you could tell the people another eight counts on your own. Create out of the moment eight counts and don't think just let your body think. So you go there, you concentrate. And then you can give some things. Good, I see somebody moving, yeah? So we have different sides in the room. We have corners. We have different levels. So create eight movements just out of the moment and try to remember. I can use, for example, the, the thing that I've done before. One, two, three, four, and maybe I do five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I do again. This is my combination. We would have like lots of chore choreographies from different people. My inspiration is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I was using the task hip, I was using different levels and I created these eight counts for myself. And I try to remember that. So one more time. One, ha, ha, wa, and stand. If you imagine now we have first choreography, everybody's doing the same. Second part of the choreography, everybody is doing more or less the same because we are using the given material. Third part, completely individual. Yeah. So we try this once and we try. I'm happy if somebody, I see somebody moving. So we try this first, what I gave. Second, what I gave, but cut down. Third, individually. So we have three eights. Yeah, let's try this. So we have, okay, I'm waiting for you. I can see you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
you see a couple of minutes and we have already this kind of forever. So when I have this now, I have actually A, B, C, right? So I have first choreography, second choreography, third choreography. A, B, C, I can combine also in a different order. So I could say, okay, you can do B, C, A, B, A, C, C, A, B. There are lots of, I'm not a mathematic, but there are lots of combination possibilities. Um, and with this, you can also play. You can also play random. Imagine, imagine you have 10 dancers on stage, 10 dancers on stage. All the 10 dancers have now the three choreographies. And you can give them the, um, or you can allow them to make their own order. Yeah, to be, they can have their own order. So let me, for example, I'm, start, I'm doing B, C, A now. Maybe somebody can move again with me and decide A, B, C, B, C, A, or B, A, C. So I will do for myself B, so the variation of the first choreography, C, the completely individual choreography, with A, the given choreography. So seven, eight, I do one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a new, good, I can see it, good. This is a new combination. And I can promise you, if you, as somebody who's doing the choreography, is watching this, you can spend now another two hours with finding all the different variations and making a decision. Because this is the thing in choreography. We have to kick the ball. So this was the kicking of the ball. And we have to make decisions. This is very important. So after some time, I have to decide which kind of combination I would like to do, yeah? But I would like to add one more thing. So, because this is still too easy, maybe. So you see, yeah, you see the people and maybe you think, oh, this is interesting, this choreography. So we can put a fourth part there, a fourth choreography with grabbing one of the choreographies that you think is talking to you, is interesting for you. So I'm somehow pretending now that I see a choreography which I like from somebody else. No? We can always learn from each other, we can always take from each other. Um, so maybe if somebody wants to move with me, so I, I pretend now that I saw something like one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more time, who would like to move? So we, we dive in here and then we open the arms here. Now we have left and right touches the elbow of the left and goes a bit to the back. One more time. One, two, three. Now the, the, the left arm comes and brings the right leg back. From here, one more time. One, two, three, and four into the back corner. Done. Now close yourself in the back corner here. Tom, sorry for sorry for interfere. Uh, we we are almost end of this part, you know, with forty minutes. So I will request yes. everyone to rejoin in the link within uh, two minutes. Okay, in the same link, okay. we we'll join again, and we'll just start from there. Okay, thank you.